shirt looks so good. Cool. Which one should I open first? Mm. I think this one will be quick and easy, but it's still really great too. I'm just very excited about this. I need to open this thing. Got it. This first box is from a really fun project. A fun but hectic, just like everything else. Project I'm doing with Farfetch, where I'm doing a little interview. I'm picking out my favorite denim items from their web store, which is super cool. And you guys know I've talked about Farfetch with you, how they pretty much just host a bunch of other brands inventory, which is a super interesting business model. You can see this one came from Browns, for example. But this pair of pants, I'm super excited about. And if you can see that padded V on the back, these are those gorgeous flat front vexed gen jeans. Super crazy. Vexed Generation did a bunch of re-editions with Farfetch, funny enough. And I don't know if it was exclusive or not, but nonetheless, a bunch of re-editions of some of their most iconic 90s style. Vex Generation is all about, they say, urban utility, which I think doesn't do it justice because that's such a keyword these days. But it's very purposeful, very concealing, all about the political climate of the mid 90s where they wanted to hide the wear and protect them, privacy, civil rights, everything like that. So these should be really exciting to shoot for that little editorial, but I'll need to throw those on. This package over here, waddle my way over. Can you see the tape? Can you see it? The good people at Ernest W. Baker. A video I made a few months ago was just talking about some of my favorite up and coming designers, and one that hits that eerie, Cozy, Dreamville mood is Ernest W. Baker. So that was actually the first trade I talked about in that video. This is a murky brown merino wool tartaned cardigan with some really nice wooden, potentially buttons, tortoise buttons. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. There's too much here. Just come look at it from above, please. This is a black knit top that is like a polo shirt, but it's out of this gorgeous textured knit that'll get you some skin underneath showing through. This is their bowling shirt, I believe. It's a really simple button down. They make it in a few materials. The other colors are made out of tensil, which is a really interesting wood pulp based fabric. And then the big, the big, big daddy is this, oh my goodness, red pinstriped wool suit, double-breasted, huge lapels. You might have to try this on for you guys, just might. Are you ready to see the most last minute, efficient Avery meal? Let me fix the camera. All right, don't mind me, already diving in. You have black bean pasta. I tossed it in olive oil, red pepper, nutritional yeast, garlic, pretty much whatever you like. And then there's a fat, whoa, bed of beets down there that I cooked. You'll just see this is mainly leftovers. And here, don't roast me too hard. I know it looks like it has, <laughs> I know it looks like it has a mind of its own. But this is my first stab at making burgers, like from scratch, from soy protein, shiitake mushrooms, beets, flax, a few other things. And it turned out pretty well. But now I have like 10 of them frozen, ready to go. So we're tossing it in this very, very strange pasta salad. If you want to call it that. What's up guys, Avery here, and I'm gonna be answering a few questions for my interview with Farfetch, where I picked out some of my top denim items. On the article, I shared three places that I really love in New York City that I think are a little 
underrated maybe from their location or just maybe it's a little niche but one of them was Bana Cafe which is an Ethiopian plant-based restaurant sort of between Williamsburg and Bushwick another one was the Noguchi Museum because everyone when they come to New York especially those Midwesterners they go to Broadway and they shop they go to the Met maybe, which is a great museum, but I think the Noguchi Museum, if you want something more peaceful, if you're interested in sculptures, is a great place to go. And then the last one was Dashwood Books, if you're interested in photography. That's a really nice down-to-earth bookstore. There you guys go. You get two intros for the day. That was me filming some, well, I failed to film for you guys, but I was at the time filming some interview questions for Farfetch. So I forgot to bring you guys along, but here we go. I'm wearing that gorgeous Ernest W. Baker sweater. So nice. And I love the interface of this. So, so pretty. But I'm about to run into Manhattan for the last time before I never come back from our trip. And I'm gonna be bringing all of these packages, plus the one Kaylee's holding. What do you think the size of this is? Here is that bowling shirt. I wanna show you two more items before I run out the house. I wish I had time to press this and show you everything. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous spring number. Really beautifully made, the patterns all match up great. You have no choice but to wear this collar out wide but really, really nice and light. You get a bit of that transparency, as I mentioned in the neck shirt, which I'm probably the most excited to try on. This is straight from Don, my grandfather's wardrobe. Since it's just that front panel and it's not even that transparent, gosh, what's the right word for that? It's gorgeous, oh my gosh. I am so ready to go to a driving range for the first time in my entire life. Woo! I cannot believe I made that train. Ran to the train, caught it in a sec, and just made the cutoff at the post office. Now to get groceries and pick up some camera equipment. Came home to Kaylee's cooking. You wanna run them down, you want me to. Go for it. Cauliflower, tofu, potatoes, okra. Have some berries over here that I just got. What a whirlwind. But super, super sweet to come home to. Haven't even looked at that camera lens yet, but I'll show you guys later. For now, another time, gotta refuel. For dessert, I made the trail mix that we are gonna be taking tomorrow on the flight. This is what's left over from it. It's peanuts, cashews, walnuts, dried cranberries, dark chocolate, I forget the percentage on that. And then, what else? Pistachios, pumpkin seeds. It is a sweet, salty, fatty, savory, beautiful, Pretty much just a mix of whatever your favorite bulk dry goods are. You really thought I was gonna let you guys go without seeing this? <laughs> this Ernest W. Baker suit. I mentioned the brand name as many times as possible. No, seriously, it was just so nice of them to send this over. Black virgin wool with this gorgeous red pinstripe. This is for real chef pants. Extremely elevated, beautiful. It's fully canvassed. I need to get these pockets open because they're tacked shut. But man, it fits me more fitted than I expected. And on Kaylee, it looks really boxy, like it swallows her, you know how I love that. But on me too, a little more fitted, wow. That's enough dress up. We really need to get back to work. very dark it's that time we are taking our laundry that way we come home to 
do some nice clean sheets and that sort of thing. There's a little light. And yeah, we're not even washing that many clothes for the trip because we're bringing a lot of that newly delivered Staatsballett product that I wish I could have shown you guys, but I just feel like I have so much work to get done. So much more work on the project before sharing it with you guys. So I hope you understand. But we are gonna go to the laundromat and get some errands done on our computer and then uh, be back to do a little more chores around the house. And pack. And pack, yes, that too. Here's that lens I promised I'd show you guys. 56 millimeter f1.2 Fuji Prime lens. The only other lens I have for my camera right back there is the 18 millimeter f2, which on that APS-C sensor is the equivalent of about 28 millimeters. So that has a really nice, but not overly dramatic wide angle. But this one is about the opposite. At 56 millimeters, the equivalent on a 35 millimeter frame is 85 mil. So this is an excellent, excellent, fast, sharp, beautiful portrait lens. I have to say I only tested out five or six shots back at the apartment once we finally had everything situated. But I think that combo with the wide angle lens for the small streets in Japan and the landscapes and then also having this for versatility and if we do any product photography too should be super super fun so that was the pickup that i got this second hand of course as always but man i'm excited to have both in my very small arsenal now it's 1 a.m we are packing our food, and Kaylee has confirmed that this might be the most Avery thing I've ever done. <laughs> I'm washing hundreds of these naturally dyed jewelry pouches, which is just so lovely. I'm loving it. So these were dyed with black beans. We did a few iterations. This stale light blue, almost like a copper oxidation color, was achieved through a higher pH, so a more basic solution. The interesting thing about natural dyes is that if you want the color to be vibrant right off the bat, if you want it to stick around for a long time and have the same characteristics throughout its lifespan on a garment, you need usually harsh heavy metals or some other solution known as mordant to bond the dye to the fabric which is really unfortunate because then it turns out that synthetic dyes are actually better for the environment. But what I actually prefer is a softer color that will change over time and will reveal the characteristics of the pouch you use, the t-shirt you wear, the shoes you're wearing, anything like that. So these came out gorgeous. The color's a little murky because they're still wet. I just hand washed them and now they're laying out to dry. But man, this stale, uneven indigo color is going to be lovely over time.
I'm starting to feel the time change. It's about 10 right now. Tokyo time, which is 13 hours ahead of our normal schedule. Which, it's actually going pretty good. The flight was super easy, all of that. We're in the Airbnb right now. I'll have to show you around another time, show you this gorgeous view in the morning. We put everything away. We always find it's worth it to just muscle through. It never takes as long as you think it will and makes a place feel a lot more like home. But I need to get some work done. We need to plan our next few days. I didn't get a lot of stuff done that I wanted to since the flight didn't have Wi-Fi, but that's beyond the point. I'm just glad that it went smoothly and I'm really happy to be here getting hit with that Tokyo adrenaline. I'm not sure it's enough to keep me up though. I'm gonna try to turn in early and I think we should be on a good schedule tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this day and a half, two days and a half. I'm not sure how much time has gone by in Kaylee and I's life. But appreciate you guys stopping through and hanging out. And until the next video, have a good day for me. I forgot my own catchphrase. Love y'all. Take care. Peace. All that.